Okay, how many ever heard of Alzheimer's disease? Raise your hand. Okay, Alzheimer's disease is a physician-caused disease. <clears throat> Alzheimer's disease is a physician-caused disease. Didn't exist 40 years ago, even by another name. Today, it's the number four cause of death in Americans over the age of 65. So it goes from zero 40 years ago, now it's the number four cause of death. That's caused by physicians, I'll tell you how. <clears throat> what is Alzheimer's disease? Well, Alzheimer's disease is a going away of the myelin, it's the white matter of the brain. How many of you heard of myelin? Most of you younger people should know myelin, it's the white matter of the brain, insulation material. And when it goes away, the Naked nerve fibers all tangle up. It's one of the diagnostic features of Alzheimer's disease. At autopsy, you get these nerve tangles. You've probably all read about nerve tangles. And um, uh, this is caused by the myelin going away. Well, myelin makes up 75% of your brain weight. The gray matter of your brain, the thinking part, the memory part, the problem solving part of your brain, it only makes up 2% of your brain weight. It's like two millimeters of this little covering of the white matter. The white matter makes up 75% of your brain weight. Well, this. Myelin, this white matter of the brain that makes up 75% of your brain weight, is 100% cholesterol. So, you go on a cholesterol-restricted diet, you take cholesterol-lowering drugs, BAM! You have Alzheimer's disease. Because you can't maintain the white matter in your brain anymore. You're giving up all the raw materials, you're taking drugs to drive your cholesterol down, because doctors said it would make you live longer. Let's have a look. Alzheimer's, tidal wave feared. Why is that? There's 80 million baby boomers coming along. They all listen to doctors, lower their cholesterol with diet and drugs. This came out in 2009. Alzheimer's and a relentless upper trigger. Kind of reminds me of that obesity chart. Found the doctor's instructions going this way. Why? Because numbers look particularly grim for baby boomers who follow the doctor's instructions. Exercise, drink plenty of water. Don't eat fat, eat plenty of whole grains. Oh yeah, use oils instead of lard and dairy and eggs, like George Francis. Oh, you're gonna see a lot of this kind of stuff now. A mother and son share the bonds of love, Alzheimer's disease, and the same doctor who lowered their cholesterol. Now, any Mormons in here tonight? Any Mormons, any Mormons, any Mormons? Oh, I'm disappointed, no Mormons, okay. Um, any Seventh-day Adventist, any? Okay, now, the reason why I'm asking that question is 2004, Johns Hopkins School of Medicine came out with a wonderful study on Alzheimer's disease. They went to Cache County, Utah, and they chose Cache County, Utah. I mean, you could get 5,000 people for a study in Baltimore, Maryland, right? So why did they go all the way out to Cache County, Utah? Well, that's because in Cache County, Utah, they're extremely religious Mormons. They're almost like Orthodox Jewish people when it comes to their diet. Um, they actually have a, <clears throat> um, a book uh, called the Words of Wisdom, which supplements the Book of Mormon, and it tells them what to eat, what not to eat, right? And so all of these people in Cache County, Utah, the oldest living people in America, they live to be 87. Seventh-day Adventists live to be 85. The Mormons as a group live to be 85, but the, the Mormons in Cache County, Utah live to be 87. They're all farmers, very religious farmers, with a background from Scotland. They all come, just you know, all their culture comes from Scotland. So culture the same, same genetic pool, same diet, the same profession, live in the same county, same everything. Same diet, it was, it was really a great study. I mean, it was like laboratory rats, right? It was just perfect. And what they do is take 5,000 of these people over the age of 65, they gave half of them a couple of vitamins, and the other half they gave a sugar pill. It was a blind study, nobody knew who was getting what. Well, at the end of the study, those getting the vitamins reduced their risk of Alzheimer's disease by 78%. Those getting the sugar pill increased their Alzheimer's disease risk by 78%. But you have to remember, the diet was the basic thing, okay? Now in the animal industry, we give them the perfect diet, very similar to the Mormon diet, and the Jewish diet, and the Seventh-day Adventist diet, but we also add all 90 essential nutrients. We eliminate Alzheimer's disease in animals by 100%. So now you know Alzheimer's disease is not genetic. There's no way it could be genetic if you can reduce the risk of Alzheimer's disease by 78% just by taking a couple of vitamins and a particular diet. It's not genetic in any way, shape, or form. Again, doctors were wrong. 
because their knowledge is very constricted. They have a very narrow range of training. They, they know little or nothing. Every time they utter the word nutrition or give you nutritional advice, they should be put in jail as a felon. That would stop them from killing people. If they say the first two letters of the word nutrition, they should be put in jail. You're in jail, put the cuffs on them. Now I'll give you an example. This is Ray McGregor from Charlotte, North Carolina. <clears throat> His sister, who's one of our associates, one of our distributors, three years ago called me and said her brother, eight years earlier, had been diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. Very severe, very rapidly advancing. The doctors tried all these drugs that they say they can help with dementia, no help. So she took him over the eight year period before she called me to three neurological clinics and then she took him to the medical school two weeks before she called me and <clears throat> went to the Department of Neurology at the medical school there in, in North Carolina and said, look, I want the, I'm demanding that the head of the Department of Neurology examine my brother, which he did. He said, look, this guy, he's, sitting, he's curled up on the floor He's being fed through a G-tube. There's nothing we can do. Drugs aren't going to help. Love's not going to help. Money's not going to help. Put him in a hospice. If you're going to do that, put him in the one that I own, right? Oh, he didn't say that, but I just threw that in. Put him in a hospice is what he said. <clears throat> so she calls me. So there's four different dementias. There's vascular dementia, which used to be called senile dementia. There's nothing wrong with your brain when you have senile dementia or vascular dementia. It's actually a plugging of the arteries in your brain, just like you get coronary arteries that plug. We can plug here, can plug there, right? And then there's Korsakoff syndrome, which is a deficiency of a single vitamin. It was discovered 300 years ago, set in the year 1712 by a Japanese naval surgeon. And then there's wernicke korsakoffs which is Korsakoff syndrome, that deficiency of that vitamin and MS, multiple sclerosis, mixed in together. And then there's Alzheimer's disease. So here's what I told her to do. I said, look, we're gonna treat him for all four. And I do this literally a thousand times a year. It always works out. So we're gonna try this in your brother too. We gave him the two healthy start packs. He weighed 185 pounds, so we gave him two healthy start packs. Got him off all the bad stuff. No fried foods, no oils, which is difficult because what are they feeding him through his G-tube? Insure, which is all carn oil. It's easy to get through the tube and just get, get, count the calories, and that's why they made it out of carn oil. They don't consider what it does for the patient or what it does to the patient, right? Insure is the worst. I wouldn't give insure to a communist, okay? It's bad stuff. So two healthy start packs per month, none of the bad stuff. Now, for the vascular dementia, I threw in three twice a day of the ultimate daily tablets, which are designed to get blood flow through blood arteries and support healthy blood pressure and so on. Then, for the Korsakoff syndrome, I gave him three de-stress capsules twice a day. It's two bottles a month. It has the vitamins in it that are missing when you have Korsakoff syndrome. And then, for Wernicke Korsakoff's, I added selenium to it, three of those twice a day. That's two bottles a month to deal with the lesions of the MS, which are, you can get rid of those, and MS goes away. And then for the Alzheimer's disease, I threw in 12 eggs a day to rebuild the myelin of the brain because the cholesterol is gone in his brain, so I've got to get his, ramp up his cholesterol, give him 12 eggs a day, and three of our, what we call Smart FX, three times a day, that's three bottles a month. Ultimate daily tablets, and then the last one is Smart FX, three of those, you know, like, get smart, <laughs> okay? Uh, three of those three times a day, three bottles a month, and that's the raw materials for your brain to make the neurotransmitters for memory. Duh. So she calls me in two weeks. I'm gonna give you an exact quote of what she called me. Actually, it was a week. Okay, I'm gonna give you the exact quote. She calls me on the radio, so I have the disc. I'm even gonna quote the utterances she made. She calls me in two weeks and she says, he's cured, ha, ha, he's cured. Now, Ray and his wife love me because he was, that close to death, put him in a hospice, he'd have been dead in two weeks. Okay? Now, he didn't have Alzheimer's disease like all those doctors said. He had Korsakoff syndrome, which is curable in two weeks by giving him the vitamin. Remember, I hedged my bet and I treated him for all four, and it paid off for Ray. I do this a thousand times a year, maybe more than that, and I don't even know it. But those are the ones I know about. I do have to tell you that sugar aggravates the deficiency of that vitamin. Sugar aggravates the deficiency of that vitamin, so I thought this was kind of profound. Now this came out um, in February of 2012, this year. High calories from sugar linked to mild memory loss in elderly. 
If you're deficient in that vitamin, you're taking lots of sugar, juices and fruit and molasses and honey and agave syrup and soft drinks and desserts and candy bars, guess what, pie and all that, you're gonna get dementia. But it's not Alzheimer's disease, it's this Korsakoff syndrome or Wernicke Korsakoff syndrome. Sugar and oil is the worst possible thing you can give to anybody with a brain problem, particularly the elderly, right? The same formula works also on Parkinson's disease, MS, multiple sclerosis, as I already mentioned, and also Lou Gehrig's disease, ALS. Thousands of these people a year were able to reverse from their disease, usually it takes 60, 90 days. I'm very famous in Western Canada for this. Some very wealthy guys had Parkinson's disease and we went back there three months after we got them going, their wives were very, I mean, they made them stick to the thing. They ground up everything, put it with a turkey basing syringe through their G-tubes. Went back in three months. One of them is, uh, he comes to all our meetings and he's a very wealthy guy and had put all his employees on our program. His name is David Dietrichs. He had all these patents for quick release and quick coupling tractor equipment. And he comes up to me and says, Hi, Doc. Uh, I really don't remember you, but, but you're the guy that saved me. I, I'm the one that used to have Parkinson's disease. And, and he was a vegetable when I first met him. And now he's perfectly healthy in just three months. And he'd been getting worse and worse and worse for 12 years. You're very dangerous now, because now you know.